What's up, y'all? It's me, Erica. We are down here, honey. I just dropped my kids off first day of school. Um, I was like, I can't believe I have high school. I like, girl, I was just telling somebody the other day, I was like, I have so many vivid memories of high school that I like, I'm, I can't believe that I'm dropping my own children off to their first day of school, 11th grade and 9th grade. So they're both at the same school now. I'm excited. I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, are you nervous? But I sent the one that's going into the ninth grade, I sent him to summer school so that he can get used to the campus, make make some new friends, right? Um, so yeah, he got his schedule. He's excited. He gets the rest of his books today and they give him a backpack, of course, and a laptop and all that good stuff. So I'm excited for him first day of school. I was like, are you nervous? He's like, not really. <laughs> like, okay. So go ahead and like, subscribe, comment, let the people know you stopped by. We're down here. Um, I did finish watching Kenya Moore with Carlos King. I thought it was a really good interview. You know, I'm team twirl. Honor I'm not a, even an honorary member, honey, from the beginning. I like Kenya from the beginning. You know, we go, I mean, we go up for the pretty smart girls. Correction. We go up for the pretty smart girls. We don't, the girls have to give us more than tits and ass and a smile, right? A big booty and a smile for us to go up for them. Ha! A big, a big booty and an invisible lace, lace, okay? We go, we go up for the smart, intelligent girls, okay? And I'm so glad that Kenya said, what kind of shit would it be if I was actually a beauty queen out here paying for niggas? Y'all really want to make it seem like, Kenya's paying for me and paying for Walter. That was the last of the interview. Here she go. Oh, hold on. You're, you're just like, all of a sudden you're a different person and you're like doing the most. Mm -hmm. So that's how that started. People didn't see it that way. They look at this young, cute girl. Oh, so it moved. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. When she walked in. And I was like, oh, it's one thing I admire most about people is intelligence. I think people know that. You know, I like a smart, pretty girl. You know, I live for, you know, I live for a smart, pretty girl. So, you know, I'm not a pretty girl. You know, I keep me a smart, pretty girl. So, you know, so I'm right. like, no, I'm not, I'm not jealous. I'm not, because I keep a dollar worth of dimes around. You know that. Come on now. You better. <laughs> you know that. So, please don't come over here talking about some beauty, because I have seen beauty in my life. Hey, Tracy so. Edmonds. <laughs> Right. Hey, Tyra. You're not Tracy Edmonds. Tyra was my best friend. Is my one of my best friends, yeah. even to this day. So please don't act like I'm jealous of this. You know, I'm, I'm not. Let's just be clear. I can appreciate beauty at its finest. So, um, yeah, so that's how, that's how all that started. You know, the people go up for Portia. She's big booty and a smile and an invisible lace in the front, honey. And goofy and, oh, I don't know. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> can you got her down. Um, can you talk about her mom? We already know the issues with her mom. Oh, when she said that Phaedra threw that, that used, weaponized what she shared with her in, in a vulnerable, vulnerable information about her and her mom and how Phaedra used it against her and how Phaedra had um, Walter on retainer. I told y'all, I we've been telling y'all that, like, there's no way that this woman, and then for y'all to believe it and carry it, like, even this season, Sheree is asking Where's, where's, where is, um, what's his name? Roy. Where's Roy? Kenya's invisible man. Girl with the same, like Tyrone, when you was looking for Tyrone, when he was supposed to meet you and you called Kenya because you were feeling like an idiot. Obviously she didn't feel that much like an idiot. She, she brought another musty nigga on her, um, on, on the platform. Anyways, it's not about a charade. Raggedy bitch. <laughs> she was like, even Candy told you that Walter was, was, dating Kenya. You know, you got to believe Walter. I mean, Walter, you know, you got to believe Kit Candy. Everybody believes Candy. So if Candy says it, girl, her mother abandoning her, her mother, her mother telling her to her face, I don't, and her mother and her grandmother, I don't have, I don't have uh, a daughter. That has to be really, really sad for somebody to say, somebody that you want to have a relationship with. But I, I I thought that Kenya's mother had sent um, Brooklyn some like little dresses or something like that when she was first born, I believe, um, which I thought was odd because all of these years of you not acknowledging the daughter, but then you want to acknowledge the granddaughter. And then I don't know, do you want to maybe try again and try to, you know, repair what you kind of messed up in Kenya? Like, 
What do you want to do? You have to be, you have to be very careful with those parents that you have, like, you know, you're either estranged from, or you have like, like, you know, like an odd relationship with, because what you experience as a child, if the, if the grandparent or your parent is not attuned and hasn't, you know, resolved their issues of how they, how they raised you and haven't acknowledged and taken responsibility of how they've harmed you, the emotional scars, physical, physical scars or whatever, you don't want, you don't want them around your children simply because they're the grandparent. Cause what they'll do is do the same thing, basically continue a cycle and do the same thing they did to you that they did to your children, that they did. They'll do the same thing to your children that they did to you. If you're not careful, I'm one of those people who I was like, I have this tumultual relationship with my mother who I had, who I, to this day, do not want a relationship with. I do not want to be in relationship with her. I don't want to be friends with her. I think I even told her one time, if you were just a a woman, just a woman, just a woman, another woman, a woman to woman, you're not somebody I would choose as a friend. You're not. And I was just clearly, I was just clearly, you were just clearly a vessel that I had to come through because it's never felt authentic ever, never. I remember when it got I remember like the disconnection when it happened, ironically, is when she got saved. I, she turned into a different person that I didn't recognize and I could not respect. And especially because she started aligning herself with these ideas of Christianity and wasn't really studying, almost like I, I'm just listening to what the people say and I'm going to be like a sheep. And I have, I don't respect that. I, I don't respect that in anyone, anyone who just blindly follows, doesn't study, because if you did study, you would have a different awareness. And we just never, after that, she did, she stopped dancing. I used to, I used to be so enamored with my mother when I would see her dancing. I used to be like, oh my God, she's a, she's a butterfly. She's a butterfly. But honey, she, honey, when Jesus entered the chat, like my mom even has a white Jesus on her wall, girl. Right. Like girl, we don't go together at all at all, girl. I can't, I can't even respect that. Especially oh, at least have a black Jesus for crying out loud. Like you got, and that, that ain't even Jesus. That's what's his name? Caesar, Caesar Bugatti, <laughs> Caesar Belogi. I don't know. It's some, it's some man, but that's who you have on your wall. Girl, I can't respect it anyway. So Kenya has to be very careful because you don't want your child around the person who kind of harmed you and hasn't apologized, hasn't, and even if they apologize, they haven't changed their behavior. Um, so you know what it, you know what it is, right? So, um, let's see where, oh, we got the little doggy out, honey. (sighs) So we're, we're here, honey, we're down here. Thought I was feeling you. So we're down here, child. And what else did she talk about? She talked about Mark. Um, She's the one who approached Mark or, you know, look for his number or whatever like that. Um, She talked about Nene and Nene being a force on the show. And he asked um, Kenya the same question as he asked um, Nene, like, who is the one that you went toe to toe with that can't not you can't be denied? She was like, of course, it's Nene. I'm not going to take her flowers away. I am not going to. Um that's one thing I don't like to do. Like, even though you don't like the person, you don't get along with the person stripping them of accomplishments simply because you don't like them. Oh, they, they're not really that good. They don't, they don't really sing that good. They're not really a good actor. As soon as you don't like them anymore, you start to try to strip them of, of accomplishments. And that's one thing you can't take from a person, no matter how hard you try, you can't take their skills that they've learned and applied and become successful at. You can't take that away. I would be a fool to say R. Kelly's music is not good, but me, his, what he stands for does not align with me at all. It's out of tune. It's static. When I hear it now, I can't, I can't even listen to nothing. I used to be in a, um, I used to go to a, um, what do you call it? What do you call them? Zumba, Zumba class. And the lady used to end with step in the name of love. And I would get my things and my keys and I would leave. I'm not, well, I'm not stepping in the name of nothing because the kind of love he's giving out is not, doesn't align with me. So no, absolutely not. So, um, you can't, this is a black horse. You cannot, um, 
strip somebody's accomplishments away. So she was saying like, Nene is really the force that, you know, that she is, and she's really good at what she does. And she even gave, you know, Portia props on them coming in season five and really kind of reviving the show and being a force. Even there, and even Kenya said, you know, you, it's undeniable what Portia and I delivered on screen. When we got along, when we didn't get along, same with Nene, when we got along, when we didn't get along, Kenya is that girl and you can't deny it. Um, somebody said the way she tears up talking about things in her past, her mother is heartbreaking. That's a pain. No matter how old you get, you still remember. And it hurts like the first time somebody said, I met her one time at four sisters only, and she was the sweetest person ever. Her energy was not of a villain. When I met her, she even complimented me. My grandmother raised me and my mom doesn't like me either. I sympathize with her. I know how she feels. Great interview. I've been a member of Team Twirl since day one. Beyond Kenya's protective bearer, she is a compassionate and soft woman. I love when Kenya said, <clears throat> Kenya is an Aquarius. And, you know, they be goofy. Like, they goofy. Like, and it's, it's that's a an endearing quality. Like, goofy, always laughing. You can hear uh, Kenya has a, <laughs> like, she just be laughing at everything. <laughs> laughing at everything. Goofy, light, typically lighthearted. Cannot stand people who are not intelligent. That Aquarius, if you... My son is an Aquarius child. My father was an Aquarius child. They will argue you down. But if you're not smart or you're trying to deliver something to them and it doesn't make sense, they're going to tell you, girl, what the fuck? This don't even make sense what you're trying to tell me. What you're trying to give to me, is th- it doesn't make sense. We got chai this morning. Chai with a little honey. My Aquarius child, he corrected me. Stop calling it chai tea because chai is tea. <laughs> like that so Kenya is like she was she was fit into that villain role all of the things that they said especially Phaedra's musty raggedy screw face screwed up trout mouth ass she is the one that's I'm like uh, I can't wait till they get into the story with Apollo and how that all that happened and Apollo lying on her and everybody believing this this damn felon over the beauty queen you know what I'm saying Girl, why would girl and like really believing it? And then Phaedra really calling her a whore and this and for Florida. And look at Phaedra now. Look at Phaedra, what she's giving to the girls now. No prayer cloth. She don't eat. She got on denim underwear, honey. I don't even know if those are shorts with all her legs hanging out. You know, if she was still that mullet wearing bitch that she was on Real Housewives of Atlanta, you know, she would be talking shit if somebody posed like that, the way that she's that way that she is posing down to the internet girl give me a break as someone who has misunderstood kenya for years i'm i'm sorry and i strongly believe that she deserved deserves so much more grace i think that's where cynthia went wrong on the real housewives girls trip she went in thinking okay kenya has a villain edit so when she comes on the show how many people were like oh i'm scared to meet kenya i'm scared to meet kenya kenya's a thing da 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 and so I think, you know, let's be kind to Kenya when she gets here. You know, she's going through a divorce. Da, 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 da. Let's give her the big room. Let's do this. Let's do that. You know, Kenya, like making like disclaimers as it as it as it came to Kenya. And I don't think she was ready for Kenya to be so well liked by these women. Like the only one she really didn't get along with was Ramona. And she wasn't going to allow Ramona to play that. Oh, the you know, oh, the damsel white woman now. But but be aggressive at the same time. But when the aggression is returned, all of a sudden you want to cry. And all of a sudden, oh my, oh my God, please send the white men to, to come save me. She did not see it for Ramona. I don't know how their relationship is, but Teresa loved Kenya. Melissa couldn't keep her hands off Kenya. Kyle loved Kenya. They all loved her. Luann, I don't know how Luann and Kenya, I think Luann, I need to go back and watch how Luann and Kenya got along because, you know, Lu- Luann was not, you know, Luann will hold Ramona accountable, right? And be like, girl, you're wrong. You don't do that or whatever. But, you know, remember when Kenya told Ramona, whatever you heard about me, believe it, bitch. <laughs> Um, somebody said, no one can convince me to dislike this woman. I love her shade, her energy. I want to see more of her life in RHOA. Talking about Mark. Talking about bringing men on the show. She was like, it's like a death wish when I bring the men on the show because the fans will go out. I'm telling you, the fans will go out and find 
they will do their investigative rep- and report back investigative work and they will report back to the people. She said one guy she was dating, he was just in a trailer and honey, the people went and got his mug shots and he was calling Kenya like, girl, I have clients who are asking me about these mug shots or something that is totally unrelated, you know? So she said she was fit into that, you know, that kind of stuck, like everything, they kind of build a character for the person and things about them. And those things kind of stick like Cynthia, not having a backbone and not speaking up for herself. We know that's a flat out lie. Because we know when it, when the person who gets the smoke, when we were talking about Cynthia the other day, how she always she kept her foot on, on KKK Kim's neck. She really did. She really did. When Kenya said she's a good wife and will be great wife in her ne- next marriage. I felt that I wish the best for her. All of these years and it still makes me cry. I feel so bad for her and so many. I feel so bad for her. So many of the same emotions. Kenya is a generous person. She's playing a role on the show that only shows her diva moments. But believe me, she's a genuine person. I know people who are who know Kenya and have been in relationship with Kenya around charities and stuff like that. And they always say she's just goofy. She's like a girl, like a like a, you know, like a like a fairy almost, like a little whimsical, like she laughs, she wants to joke around, she really wants to have a good time. So when Courtney is on this interview with this guy that nobody knows who the fuck this guy is who's interviewing her, but Courtney is there um, and saying these things like she's the meanest person I ever met. Girl, no, what you wanted was an experience that you didn't get and she won't give you and you're mad that she won't give it to you. The same way she was on expensive taste, you know, on, I think it's cosmopolitan where you got to pick out what's expensive and what is not expensive. And you got to, you know, pick it out. That's when she was playing the drums, talking about Kenya Moore hair care. And she, what was my, what was I saying? Damn, I lost my train of thought. She's a genuine person. Goofy, goofy. I was saying how Kenya was goofy and she, and she's a lighthearted lighthearted person. You could just see it in her interview. I mean, you could see when she talks to people in the interview, she's just lighthearted. And for somebody to come out and say, she's the meanest person that I ever met. It's, it's a flat out lie. Like it's a lie. That's your experience with Kenya, you know? And I feel like it's something that you want. They asked about Marlo. That's what I, that was my point. Um, when she was on that thing of cosmopolitan doing that expensive taste thing, they asked her about each of the women and they asked about Marlo and she passed. Marlo gets nothing from Kenya. The way you talked about her and when you hear her, the way she talks about her mother in the beginning and how her mother was, you know, unkind, just unkind, did not, did not acknowledge her. And then for you to be like, not even your mother wanted you, bitch, we're never coming back from that. That's the thing. That's for me. Like I'm never getting, I might be, I might speak to you when I walk into a room, but that's all you're going to get from me. You're not going to be, you're not going to even be close enough to me to even weaponize anything about my life t- to me. Shit that I've shared with y'all and you want to throw it in my face. Not even your mama wants you. Who wants you? Cause weren't you in foster care? Why were you in foster care? Okay. And how would you like for somebody to throw that in your face? Come up. You got to get new material when it comes to that. Um, what else was on here? Um, I haven't finished the interview, but I wanted to comment Kenya for being such an amazing mother. Despite it all, you are undoing generational trauma every day. Yeah. When I see her with Brooklyn, it does, it brings up emotions because this is something that this woman wanted. And then she has an opportunity to pour into a little girl the way she wanted her mother to pour into her. Right. And her mother couldn't do it. She's teenage mom, you know, and she, you know, a lot of people who experience trauma, we don't know her mother's story. They want to compartmentalize and ignore that part. Like, I don't even have a daughter. I didn't even have a child, like to that point. And he asked her, does you think your mother deals with a mental illness? Of course she does. Of course, unless you're just a mean ass scoundrel, but I think she does deal with a mental illness and I'm glad that her father is there and he accepts her. And then her, her grandmother raised her. We know that we didn't even know that Brooklyn is named after her grandmother, Doris. Right. So, you know, when you, when you are in a friend group and somebody uses that against you, bitch, we're not coming back from that. That's why I don't understand what candy, like girl, like, how do you, how do you come back from that? Like, I don't know, mother Teresa. I have no idea how you come back from that. Woo. You know, you got church in the morning. You're doing God's work. You're going in. 
You ain't trying to hurt nobody. She's just trying to do the best she can. Happy on her own with her friends without a man. I'm warning everybody. Yes, I'm going to love on me. Yes, nobody can judge me but me. Come on. That, sh- that song is in my head. Um, she's kind of annoyed that she didn't get a spinoff show. She's annoyed that she doesn't sit in the first seat. She, she mentioned Kyle, Teresa, Nene. Um, who else? Nene, Kyle, Teresa, Vicky, always sat in the front. And for them to not sit Kenya in the front, it's something up with that for her to not be in the first chair all the time because of what she brings to the show. A lot of people, I remember when Real Housewives would come on on Sunday and people were still viewing it live. Kenya would always be trending. Kenya always trend. Y'all couldn't stand her so much that you spoke about her so much that she would trend. And it's like, oh my God, why are these, these people can't stand that they hate to, they love to hate Kenya. And to this day, there are people still trying to blame Kenya for different things. And she's really not, she was like, I'm not giving you much this season. She admitted to that. I'm not doing that much. So I don't even know why people are trying to, it was Kenya's fault. You heard Kenya trying to stir it up. It's like, girl, shout out to Kenya. What was that? Shout out to Kenya. Um, I thought it was a really good interview. I love the dynamics between her and Carlos. They say they speak on the phone at least once a week. They're really cool with Carlos. Um, I'm glad he's bringing the women onto the show instead of, you know, doing a Zoom call or whatever. Where does Carlos live? Does he, I don't even know where he lives. Does he live in Michigan? Or does he live in Georgia? I don't know, but maybe he lives in Georgia or just rent, rent studio space. I don't know. But, um... She says, this is another comment. Hearing what Kenya's mom said to her as a child reminded me of what my mom said to me, which was, you ruined my life. I had so many dreams and you took it away from me. It does stay with you and makes you resilient. Props to Kenya. That's what Kenya said. So when you come for me, I'm going, my, I, I will get into armor and I'm going to, I'm going to come for you and you're not going to like it. And she said, a lot of people are responding to her reactions to being mistreated. And that's what a lot of people do because they want to blame the victim for their reaction. You want to be offended by my defense and me defending myself. Who said that in the song? Cardi B. You're, you're offended by my defense of myself. When I come out and defend myself, all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, I can't believe you said that. What are you talking about? Somebody attacked me. So I'm going to come back at them. You sending over a little, I'm sending over a bazooka, bitch. And that's what it's going to be. And you're just going to have to deal with it. Sorry. <laughs> you're going to have to deal with it. Your arranged marriage? Right. Because you basically admitted that uh, Cordell was your, a be- you were a beard. Girl, everybody looking like, girl, yes. Now what? And and she did make those suggestions. Don't he need some anal beads? Wouldn't he like this dress? Remember when she was unpacking her stuff? You were making a lot of insinuations that your ex-husband was homosexual, a bisexual, okay? And then now all of a sudden, that's what the girls like to do. As soon as they break up with a nigga, he's gay, you know, or has a small dick. You were scooting on the dick, though. <laughs> scooting on the dick, honey. Y'all, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Let me shut up. Um, there's a knot in my stomach every time I hear her story as a as a child. Nini, Portia, and Kenya were true stars of the Real Housewives. Point blank. Period. No, as an ensemble cast, they were really good. Portia, Kenya, Nini, Cynthia, Candy, Kim. I don't know about Sheree. Marlo was a good friend. Sheree would be a good like a good. Would be, I don't know. Yeah, I don't even know why Sheree. Honey, you need some work. You needed some help. You needed some help. The audition. You on the wrong team. Nene was letting her know. You stay on the wrong. She stays on. We know Sheree stays on the wrong team. She stays on the wrong team. She proves that every season. Um, She's there and they haven't fired her. Maybe they'll fire her this season. I appreciate how Kenya gave us a backstory of, of season five, what really occurred. It shows that Bravo literally lies. They even supported the book about housewives and no background stories on how they got on the show was shared. And Andy, it's a hard pass for me. Um, 
Kenya says she goes up for the girl. She's like, she really hated how she was portrayed. She told them she, you know, the, the first her and that scene with Portia, they were not real. They weren't housewives. They hadn't, they didn't get their peach. And she said, she told them, I'm not doing any more. Y'all have used me enough. Either y'all gonna hire me or we can part ways. And if we part ways, you can't use any scenes with me. And then they ended up hiring her. They, they asked her for one more scene. I think it was for, well, for Nini's. Um, a, a Nini had an event. Sisters or something. Sisters. Um, was that the the DV event she had or her foundation? What was it called? I forgot. But yeah, so I thought it was a really good interview. So shout out to Kenya and Carlos. Um, let me know what you thought about the interview. Get down in the comments. Let me know kind of what stood out to you. I'm glad that she, I'm really glad that she straightened that shit up with, with, um, with, um, Walter and, and saying, you know who, you know who started that shit? It was Phaedra's raggedy, musty, trout mouth, screwed up face, mullet wearing ass hooker. Girl, I cannot stand Phaedra Parks. I can't. Ooh, I can't stand a woman. Like she's so like, she's always looking like this. That's how her face looks to me. Always twisted up. Not like, not twisted like Tokyo Tony's, but still twisted up. So let's go on the blogs, honey. What else do we have going on? I sponsored the, now I sponsored the blog. Let me tell you something. Down here. Nene Leaks sued over swag boutique store. You owe us rent. She is literally grieving her husband today. It's his birthday. Have some empathy. Greg signed the lease, not me. He ain't here. (laughs) Happy heavenly birthday, Greg, with two G's. Hello. That's why I know when people were like, when Greg died and everybody was like, oh, Greg, making posts about Greg. And I was, and everybody was spelling his name, G-R-E-G. I was like, y'all didn't know Greg because his name is fucking spelled with two G's. That's when people be like, oh my God, Erica, I love you, E-R-I-K-A. You don't love me because you don't even know how to spell my fucking name. That, I can't stand when people do that. It, I have to do that at work. My name is in my fucking email address. Why are you spelling it with the K? Look at my name. Do you know there's different ways to spell Erica? Yes. So look at my name when you're spelling it. I hate that. But anyways, today would be, you would be eating our favorite foods, uh, French fries and chicken tenders. I love you to that for that. It was simple things about you that got me every time. I love you and miss you more than words can say. My man, my man, my man. August 16th to September 1st. That was a, that's a nice picture she has on his, um, his, um, um, marker. She responds to reports to say that she's being sued for hundreds of thousands of dollars in back rent. And now her store is closed. The report came out on her husband's birthday, her, um, her ex-husband's, her late husband's birthday. Somebody said, I'm sure she was the executor over his estate, which means she's legally obligated to pay because the debts of the deceased are now paid out of the estate. This ain't something I heard. This is something I lived and have lived. And I know. When your husband signs a lease, you're both responsible for it. Leave that lady alone this week. I mean, she got a point. Once a person passed, a contract is voided. That's not true. Okay, girl, that's not true. All the bills need to be paid, honey. Why would you... Why would y'all show those last two slides out of all things that could have added pick wise? I think that was okay to add her, her picture and him. Um, let's see what else is going on. Oh, let me go back here. Let me see what y'all tag me in. Let me see if y'all tag me anything. Shout out to y'all that tag me on TikTok and Instagram. Mm. Girl, these people. I have a post that got girl twenty three thousand likes, and it's Mister Let Go on tonight's conversation podcast talking about men who lack, you know, femininity, who lean so far over. And like it's literally a balance. It's like a like a scale, right? You have masculinity on this side, you have femininity on this side, and then you have those people who like lean into masculinity so much that they want they steer clear of any fem, feminine energy. They of they're so and it's it's really killing them. Like I told this guy, um, he was saying I'm not fit. Like I think a lot of men and women believe that 
masculinity is only aligned to men and femininity is only aligned to women, which is a clear imbalance because you need to be able to access both. And there are attributes, characteristics, and behaviors that are aligned to acting like a woman or acting feminine and aligned to acting masculine. And I think some men, because we live in this matrix where there is an aversion, you learn an aversion to femininity. Like at the, when, when you break down like the homophobia, the transphobia, it all, when you break it all down and you pull back all the later layers, it's rooted in a aversion to femininity. They don't want men who are transitioning into women. They hate it because you don't hear nothing about trans men, right? The gay men who are feminine, they hate it. They hate it. They hate the feminine, right? But when you lean so far into the feminine that when you lean so far into the masculine that you reject your feminine, it it literally kills you. There are men who will kill another man over being like, you're, you're saying I'm feminine. You're saying I'm not masculine. I will, I will end your life for that, right? I hate, don't call me feminine. I'm not a woman. And they believe that characteristic gossiping, right? When we know that men gossip, but you align that that characteristic as it's a woman, like, oh, you a bitch over there gossiping like a bitch. When men gossip, right? Um, being caring, being attuned, being nurturing. Yes, those are characteristics that can be, that are both masculine and feminine. A lot of men have the idea of masculinity fucked up. Like even when you, as a masculine person, when you come into a space and there's conflict, the masculine is supposed to bring order. So all these masculine men who are around causing chaos and confusion, that is, out, you're out of alignment. You are out of alignment and you are going to end up either with some health issues or somebody's going to end your life. And it just works like, it just works like that because you're unbalanced. And I believe that women believe that they have the cornerstone on femininity and you don't because men and women, we possess both. We come from both. So how can you reject half of yourself? It's really odd. And then how they, uh, they align taking care of your home. They align that to being masculine when that's not true. It is just not true. There's a lot of things and characteristics that are aligned to being masculine and feminine, feminine that are very harmful to everybody. And when you lean so far into your feminine that you're so toxic, you take care of people, you can't say no, you you just do the most so that you can be like, oh, you say I'm nurturing, so I need to be nurturing. You have women who are not nurturing and they feel like something is wrong with them because that's supposed to be an attribute that a woman possesses. And not every woman it possesses that characteristic. They don't. And they feel bad because they because they don't. I'm I'm not a sensitive person. I'm not um, nurturing. I'm not compassionate, right? And so you feel like I'm not a woman because I don't these um these these characteristics that you've assigned to me. I don't possess, or I don't possess them as much as I should. You know, um, I said to this guy, I'll let you hear. I'll let you hear it first. Hold on, let me go back to it. This is Mr. Let Go. Hold on. Look at me. I'm a masterpiece. Um, Here's Mr. Let Go. You know, Mr. Let Go has a lot of trauma. He does not like women. He hates single mothers. He hates single mothers. He has like this. He has a, 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 a bug up his ass about single mothers. He cannot stand it. Even though he was raised by a single mother, he can't stand it. Um, and so he's talking about how he's never seen a feminine man. The first feminine man that comes up into my, into my headspace is Prince. He was very in touch with his femininity. David Bowie, very, very Mick Jagger, very in touch with their femininity. Um, um, uh, who else? Um, those are the public figures that I can name right off the back, especially musicians. They're very much in touch with that feminine side, but there are so many women who want to have sex with Prince, but he was wearing heels and lace, okay, and pearls and diamonds and pearls, right? But there was something about him that women were drawn to, and it probably was his femininity because he seemed a little bit safer in that way. He wasn't so toxic in expressions of his masculinity, but when he talked, that deep-ass voice, and it's like, and then, then he's like, very like, 
It's not, there's no aggression exuding from his body. He didn't have to do that. And the people, men and women alike, men would say, I would be afraid to look in Prince's eyes because that motherfucker was so magnanimous that I, I didn't even want to look at him. Right. Here is Mr. Let Go saying he's never met a feminine man, which is a fucking lie. Because anything that men do, if a man is, y'all even say, crossing his legs like all the way crossing and not putting the ankle to the knee crossing his leg all the way over where the knees the knee the knee is on the knee the other knee is on top of the knee a lot of people see that as feminine right my grandfather used to sit like that and be smoking his cigarettes and drinking his damn j and b and orange juice child and then we'll paint the house the next day okay and some I love when I see men sitting like that especially the old men they're drinking their coffee and their entire leg be crossed over okay people say that's feminine right listen to what he says I mean I don't know what a feminine man it is it, man it is I don't you know exactly what it is and you, you honestly this is Mike that, the poet that's the one thing that you probably like as a human is this empathy vehicle that you're so hold on so like it's too loud to, uh, lay claim to when really it's, I mean, it's, it's necessary for your manhood god hold on I closed it necessary for your manhood Mm -hmm. I believe that the most well-rounded individuals, male and female, must have the ability to be what you know, call this masculine. When it's uh, as a as a woman, it's like when it's two becomes one. He says something that I'm gonna correct. Over. There's this purge. There's a sauce that you make of a man's masculinity and a woman's femininity. Those things don't just like y'all mesh. So does that energy. I would not expect my woman to not pick up some sort of masculine traits. But these are mine. I get to watch her use my slang. You don't own masculine tra traits, right? You don't. Everybody can em embody both of those things. And that's what I said. He's on point with the embracing of femininity. But you, eh, because you do need it for survival. Just how women and femmes should embrace masculinity for survival. But men and women and non-binary people are both the balance a balanced person embodies both, right? And could go on a spectrum of how they how they show up, which is their gender expression, right? Um, you need to have both feminine and masculine energy. We are both and neither at the same time, and that's and that's real. And for somebody to say they don't they don't know, I don't know any feminine men. You're a liar. You're a liar. And because you equate femininity to only be able to be embodied by someone with a vagina it's just wild and it's wrong it's just wrong like a lot of y'all need to understand i wish i had the cabalion here i was i you know i it's something that book is so tore up i was gonna bring it today with me for for, for some reason i didn't know i was gonna talk about this but it has so many comments it has 466 comments on here let's finish listening to um his name is mike the poet carry that like i carry yeah, that's, that's, that's the most that's beautiful real. thing that's as long as we call it a war we, we will forever be intimidated when we see it in that's ourselves so but that's really just too loud when they touch you in a way that makes you softer bro yeah and mm -hmm. you must you must you must acquire and there's survive. nothing like, soft like, about them if, if if you if you are saying that a woman has the cornerstone on femininity even though you your a lot of your characteristics about femininity has been authored by men, right? Especially pink and nails and dresses and skirts and da da da. That's all that don't have nothing to do with what I'm talking about. When you a lot of people think because a woman only possesses femininity, so it should bleed over to a man when you're in relationship and a woman makes you softer in a way, right? You don't have you're not you don't have all these pricklies like a porcupine out, you're not so aggressive. No, it's you coming in contact with it, within yourself. It doesn't bleed over from a woman. It's you in you. It, it's in your body already. It's in you already. It's in you already, right? Me being feminine does not. Me being feminine and being with a man. Man is. Me being feminine and being with a man. It doesn't bleed over. He embodies it already. He has it in his body already. He's not embodied. And it kills a lot of men. Um, exactly. Let me see. I'm going to read some of the comments. A lot of people are like, no, 
whoever husband he is, give him a round of applause because yes, sir, finally a man talking wisdom. He don't know because he only likes a masculine. Nah, he ate him up for real. Who, me? He done already told on himself with this foolishness. Bro be telling the truth. A human must possess both masculine and feminine traits. Uh, the second man is wise enough. All these brainwashed men in the comments thinking bro is trying to turn them gay on behalf of all women. Please watch the video twice and find a therapist quickly. Here's some of the comments that keep getting liked that I told this guy because it, it, it does harm you. It says, um, this guy says, no other culture of men in the entire planet is encouraging to be feminine except feminine, 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 except black men. So there's this idea that we want black men to be gay. It's, it's and coming into your feminine means that you will be gay. You see the aversion, right? I don't want to be gay. <clears throat> That's homophobia, right? I don't want to be seen at as gay. That's homophobia. So I won't lean into any feminine parts of myself because I don't like the feminine right? So your homophobia is like rooted in being anti-woman, being anti-femme, really, right? I said, nah, you have all been socialized to perform hyper-masculinity and you're extremely unbalanced and volatile because of it. And y'all will do the most, even kill each other to uphold your warped idea of gender expression and sexuality and the performance of masculinity. You are an extremely repressed group of people and a lot of you and your relationship with masculinity fosters an unsafe space for men, children, and women and to yourself. And I don't think a lot of people understand that how harmful it is to reject what's already in you. You are unbalanced and you will act volatile, aggressive. Look at Dr. Dre. He's the one. He's the one. He looks like he's about to explode pause. I don't want anybody to think I'm gay. Pause. I can't suck a lollipop because that's gay. looks like you're sucking a dick, right? You sexualize eating a banana. You know what I'm saying? You sexualize licking a lollipop. You sexualize eating ice cream, a popsicle that is shaped like a phallus, right? You hate all of that because you hate the feminine. That's what it is. Another comment that, hold on, let me show you. To be a balanced person, you embrace both masculine and feminine traits. These two were giving us, these two were given to us for survival. When you're not balanced, we become dysregulated. Okay, let's see. Hold on. His, his name is Mike, Jess Mike the Poet on Instagram. Empathy is masculine. It is the core of the protector and the provider. It is also feminine. It's the core of nurturing and providing. All genders must have it to complete in their purpose. Somebody said de debatable and that's all he said. And I said, and that's probably why you can't have constructive, progressive conversations because you think everything is, is a debate and it's not. Y'all have an aversion to women. So you reject any characteristic that aligns to your idea of what femininity is because you think it makes you a woman. That's actually mental illness. Go deeper. Stop trying to debate the harmful ideologies that you uphold and enforce. They hurt you too. Somebody says typical sign language. He says that I, I it's, he said typical sign language, which is a red pill thing where you shame, insult, guilt, and the need to be right. And nothing I said was trying to shame him. Nothing I said was insulting. Nothing I said was trying to give him guilt and nothing I said was the need to be right. Because these are, this is, this is our, these are the truths, right? About a human being. You come into this matrix matrix, and you accept these constructs and then you enforce them. Even though the constructs that you enforce hurt you. Men are out here killing men, killing trans women, killing black women and girls. Killing people that belong to the LGBTQ. Killing animals. And you're so dysregulated in your existence that you're harmful to the community. You're out here having sex with multiple women, not protecting yourself. And, and it's leading to other to heterosexual women having the highest rate of HIV cases. I'm telling you, these niggas need to be classified by the WHO organization, the World Health Organization, as a 
threat, a national health and safety threat. You are, you guys are not safe to be around because you're so masculine and aggressive and dysregulated. You have these harmful ideas that you spout every day on the internet that hurt you. You don't even, you don't even, you don't even realize how it hurts you, how being so repressed and trying to be hyper masculine can actually kill someone. He said, I told him to get a new playbook. Y'all have been running the same plays for a generation. And, 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 and it's, 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 it's crazy that you don't even see how harmful it is. Because at the end of the day, the harm that you inflict on other people, you turn around and guess who, who you blame? The feminine. You blame the woman. It all roots in a hatred of women, femininity, anything that has to do with the, the femme. They hate it. Men and women alike. And they don't even realize how harmful the ideologies that they enforce are to themselves and to other people. It's funny because men like the first guy insist their masculinity is natural and normal. And yet all it takes is two or three minutes of a conversation with them to see that they're 100 percent posturing their manhood it is a performance of masculinity that they have fucked up he says their behavior is their performative behavior is so unnatural and inauthentic that their fundamental argument collapses this is a this is a um a profile with a man's picture it says his name is tommy i'm gonna read his comment again It's funny because the men like the first guy, Mr. Let Go, insist that their masculinity is natural and normal, and yet all it takes is two to three minutes of conversation with them to see that they're 100% posturing their manhood. Their performative behavior is so unnatural and inauthentic that their fundamental argument collapses. That's why I I don't talk to these weirdos. I get them together and let them know that the playbook that they've been operating from is not working for them. It hasn't worked for them. Every social every social grade, everything is an F, is an F. And they don't realize it. And they say, well, I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a man. Girl, you're getting an F in everything. Finances, education, health. What else? Spirituality. Y'all not, con- y'all not connected to the spiritual. Y'all spout these ideologies from a Bible that you have never picked up, never picked up. And you're using it to, to, to enforce rules on women. So they, oh, you have to submit to your man. You don't even submit to a higher power. You don't even know and think and acknowledge a higher power. You think you are the one. You don't even, you can, can't, when, if you can't acknowledge a higher power and, and, and in the next sentence, you're trying to get somebody to submit to you and you don't even think there's nothing bigger than yourself out here, the master designer, you are fucked up, bro. And that's real. And those are the men that I hate to be perfectly clear. When a man is, a, listen, to, listen to me, honey. Let me tell you something. These are the characteristics. Mature. Here it is. Suitable partner shouldn't be based on their sexuality. Right? A great partner. The number one attribute. This is, these are my words. The number one attribute is heart centered. You have to be heart centered. A lot of these men are reside in their root chakra and it's imbalanced and it's and it's blocked because all they knew know how to do is fuck and drink lean and they're just imbalanced and because they're they're residing in their root chakra. I'm gonna read it all the way through and then I'll stop. The number one attribute is to be heart centered, emotionally mature consistent, attuned, insightful, connected to their masculine and feminine aspects, community oriented, someone who rejects their socialization of how boys to men are taught to treat girls to women, knowledgeable of their purpose in therapy or have resources and tools from therapy to operate from a healthy space, upheld integrity, a strong value system, truthfulness and balance. That to me is a man. And women and men should possess these qualities. That's to me, if you're attuned and you understand that you can embody both, you can reside in both, you can access femininity, you can access masculinity when you need to, but you you have both in you. And when you reject that part of you, it's harmful to you and other people around you. 
My, from my vantage point, these attributes eliminate most socialized black men. And that's perfectly fine. You know, the shit is a headache and all they have brought you is headaches. Your life is so peaceful and just really serene. When you get your house, you are going to have your sanctuary. Your home is your sanctuary. Femininity femininity in men is not about being flamboyant or overperforming. It's about not rejecting what we all embody. And that's both feminine and masculine energy. I'm watching everybody. Cisgender heterosexual black men have leaned so far into their socialized behavior that for me, it's detrimental to my overall well-being. I don't want to be around anybody who is dysregulated in their masculinity. Not at all. Because you guys are turned violent violent, aggressive, like just too much. And then nobody can tell you anything. You think you know everything. You want to debate everything. It's, it's really, it's really detrimental. Especially if you have an imbalanced idea of what manhood looks like. That's, these are my words. This is from October 31st, 2022 in my notes. The illusion of white supremacy, y'all be upholding the illusion of white supremacy when you center men, when you center heterosexuality, Christianity, whiteness, and being thin. Those are the the five cogs and the box that they want you in. Upholding manhood, even women, I'm talking to women too, heterosexuality, being Christian, white and thin. That's the illusion of white supremacy. Christian, I always put in quotations because it's not really, um, if you are in your Christ consciousness, you don't act like a lot of these motherfuckers act. They be evil as fuck using in Jesus name, evil as fuck in Jesus name, evil. And if you really embody Christ consciousness, a lot of you motherfuckers wouldn't act like this. You wouldn't hate trans women or men, trans people. And and that you're, you're upholding the idea of Manhood, it's really trans women. Y'all are trying to uphold an identity of manhood when you see trans women, some people who, who are expressing themselves in womanhood and you still see them as men. You're upholding the illusion of white supremacy. When you're anti-black, you're upholding the illusion of white supremacy. You don't even realize the things that you do and how you tell and give advice to people. Like the other, I just saw a video of mine from, um, la- I think it was last year, these femininity channels authored by men. Women are the, what do you call them? The agents in enforcing, Agent Smith. You are the agents in enforcing harmful ideas of femininity in order to what? Attract a man. And you got women out here. Oh, you got to act like this. You got to act like this. You got to do this. You got to, you got to wear this. You, your nails have to look like this. You have to eat like this. All for what? Your expressions of femininity are in order to uh, obtain partnership. So that means you need to act like the way men want you to act in order to attain partnership. The feminine femininity channels are very dangerous to women. I remember looking at it. I like I asked a lot of you who have been here for a while. I asked, what are some femininity channels that you guys watch? Some people said my channel. I was like, girl, I'm not a femininity channel, but. They named some other people. I went and watched those video videos and their channels and things. And I was like, all of these women are doing is enforcing the idea of femininity through a man's lens. You're upholding the illusion. You are upholding the illusion, which are harmful rhetoric that you spew out to these young girls who are trying. Oh, my God, I need to learn how to be feminine. No, you don't need to learn how to be feminine. You are. You are masculine as well. You are both. And that's where a lot of people just really lose me. When you don't have a good grasp on feminine and masculine energies and you're out here thinking that women own femininity and that men own masculinity, you're already on the wrong path. You need to go back and relearn, relearn your ideas. You and, And a lot of you who are upholding these these harmful characteristics and behaviors of femininity and masculinity you haven't read a word about femininity and masculinity you are just going to buy what society tells you that how men are supposed to behave and how women are supposed to behave this idea comes from the bible that a lot of you haven't picked up okay that men are protectors and providers although we see women across the globe being protectors and providers that is not a masculine trait 
That is not a trait for men. And that's what gets you in these fucked up relationships because you assume because he has a penis, his role is to protect and provide for you. And that's not real in a patriarchy. In a patriarchy, a man's role is to oppress you. And who who do we... I made a video the other day. I haven't, haven't uploaded it because I started crying when I was thinking about how Jess Hilarious was down. Who protects the biological women? I don't know who you're looking to. Are you looking to the same motherfuckers who told you you don't have any autonomy over your body that you can't even get an abortion? Is that who you're looking to to pr protect you? Because they're not protecting you, sweetheart. Who protects biological women, other women? Men don't protect biological women. That is not the design in this matrix. So if that's what you're looking for, sweetheart, you better start looking in a different direction. You automatically thinking men are leaders. Absolutely not. You think because a man has a penis, he, his role is to lead you, an adult, lead you. You're an adult with a mature brain. And then you fall back into, oh, I'm, I want to rest in my feminity, femininity. What does that mean? You let a man lead you? Girl, that's fucking crazy. You can rest in your femini femininity and be a leader and be the head of household and be the one who, 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 who manages everything. You're the leader. But you have you have you have aligned with these ideologies that are harmful to you, harmful to you, so that you can rest in your femininity. What does that mean? Letting a man letting you are taking a conscious effort to let a man lead you is the wildest shit to me. Sorry, I, the lady said somebody told me that's what you YouTubers don't understand. In the podcast, you're not supposed to yell. This is not a fucking podcast, okay? Girl, unless you see a mic coming into my mouth and I say this is a podcast, go listen to my podcast that I had a few years ago. I had a podcast. I stopped doing it because I don't like to have one-sided conversations. I like to have a flow of conversation between somebody who might have a different idea than me and we can go and pontificate on that kind of stuff. So I stopped it because I was tired of talking to myself. I talked to myself down here. Anyways, it's been an hour. Take care of each other. Be balanced and attuned in your masculine and feminine energy. Do not reject your masculine. That's why when these niggas out here, oh, you too masculine, nigga, fuck you. I'm out here protecting, providing, and leading. Fuck you. So if you align that with being a man and you're not doing it, what does that make you, bitch, now? Shit. When you say a person has balls, when somebody's acting pussy, somebody has balls, that's attributed to a man. That means they have courage. No, nigga, you have pussy. You have pussy because a pussy is stronger than a dick. We know that, honey. We know that humans come out of pussy, some pussies, okay? You know it's strong and can snap back, snap that pussy back. Anyways, y'all, take care of each other. Protect your energy. Let's get down in the comments. Tell me what you know, what you've learned, how you've unlearned the characteristics of masculinity and femininity, how they've harmed you, how they how how you've come into an awareness, how you had to unlearn. Let me know. Sound off in the comments. I know a lot of y'all may not agree with me. Most of y'all probably understand that you have to be aligned in order to be balanced. Go ahead, get down in the comments. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. Peace. I don't know what a feminine man is. Man is. I don't know exactly what it is. Who, you, you honestly feel threatened by them because that's the one thing that you probably lack as a human is this empathy vehicle that you're so afraid to uh, lay claim to when really it's, un it's, it's necessary for your manhood. Mm -hmm. I believe that 1, the most well-rounded individuals, male and female, must have the ability to be what y'all call this masculine when it's uh, as a as a woman it's like when it's two becomes one there's got to be some bleed over there's this purge there's this sauce that you make of a man's masculinity and a woman's femininity those things don't just like y'all mesh mm -hmm. so does that energy i would not expect my woman to not pick up some sort of masculine traits but these are mine i get to watch her use my slang carry that shit like i carry yes. it that's, real. that's the most that's beautiful real. Mm -hmm. As long as we call it a war, we, we will forever be intimidated when we see it in ourselves. But that's really just women touch you in a way that make you softer, bro. Yeah, and, it might. and you must, you must, you must acquire that to survive. I don't know what a feminine man. Is.